Good morning, fellow orchid lovers. It's Danielle here with a video about some new things that I'm trying. And I'd like you to come along with me on the journey and see if they do well or if they fail. So I've been watching a lot of videos lately about uh, people that grow cattleyas successfully. As I explained to you recently, I was never really growing my cattleyas the way that they deserved. I wasn't taking good care of them. And uh, so I recently found uh, my version of semi-hydro that I, they seem to like and they seem to be doing well. I have uh, new growths everywhere, uh, some sheaths. Uh, you can see a sheath back there peeking through. Uh, there's, I think, three or four of my, um, my orchids have sheaths. Uh, my Catlia orchids have sheaths, but in watching other people's videos, I really don't think I'm giving them enough sun. Uh, so I have this curtain, this sheer curtain that's usually pulled down. I put up these um, LED lights to try to give it a little bit more brightness when the sun goes behind the house. Um, but I've decided that in the morning when the sun is not that bright, and this was inspired actually by Nina, because uh, she has that white curtain that she keeps up until the leaves start to get warm. Um, her orchids are so, so pale green and they get so, so much light and they're so happy that I think maybe I need to change how much light my Cattleyas are getting. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of limited with how many can be near the front. So I'm trying to pick the ones that I know are light lovers to go near the front and then ones that I have, have burned in the past. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit further back on the shelf. Uh, my new Lelia Anceps, I'm not putting right against the window because I know it likes bright light, but I don't think it likes anything directly on its leaves. Um, and then I'm just going to try every morning to do this. And then when it starts to get warm and the sun starts to get hot, I'm gonna just take that curtain and put it back down to give that extra layer of protection. Uh, today is going to be one of our hottest days yet. It's going up into the 90s. Yes, upstate New York <laughs> going up until the 90s. This is not how it's supposed to be up here, <laughs> um, but it is going to be very hot. So um, I'm going to make sure I keep touching those leaves and making sure that they're not getting too hot. So that is experiment number one. We'll see if I can successfully not burn my cattleyas. Uh, my next experiment is with a few new types of orchids in water culture. Uh, so I've had these orchids for uh, at least a week, maybe even two weeks, and I've been really putting them, putting it off, putting them into water culture because um, I don't know how well they're going to do. Um, my zygopetalum, I did unpot it and um, it doesn't have any bulbs. It's just, it's, it's just itself. There's nowhere that it was separated from a bulb. Um, so I believe it's a seedling. I tried to go back on Hauserman's page to see what it was listed as, because I may have just missed that it was a seedling, but this plant is sold out, so they don't have the listing anymore. So I don't know. Um, but basically what I've done is, um, it's not the semi-hydro setup, because I don't want the water um, to be drainable. I want to be able to give it a good drink and then, you know, keep the humidity in there without the, the holes because I am of the understanding that they like their moisture. Um, now Michael McCarthy was kind enough to tell me how he grows his and said that they like, um, they don't like a lot of air movement around their roots. They let, they like to be packed into moss. His do. So I tried to replicate that a little with these glass beads. Um, I was very careful in my placement. Um, I'm gonna give her a drink again this morning. Um, I was very careful in my placement to make sure that there were very few air pockets, which is kind of hard with a rigid material like this, but I wanted to make sure um, that there wasn't a lot of air movement around the roots. And then also too, I decided um, when she was potted in her potting material, this root was sticking out. Um, she didn't seem to mind it. It was green, it was happy, but I'm just concerned uh, that it might dry out and die. And so I have these little pieces of um, micro cloth, microfiber cloth. 
I'm not putting it anywhere near the actual um, suitable because I don't want to get this too damp, but I am kind of putting it over where the roots come a little close to the surface and keeping it damp, at least for now until she gets used to this setup. And we'll see how it goes. Um, similarly, with this um, Paphio petal, I'm sorry, it's the morning and I don't think as well. Um, she had a lot of roots that were near the top of her container. And so I put, you know, pieces of microfiber along the top of the beads to just provide that extra uh, humidity and to try to create a little bit more moisture in the cup for her. And uh, this one actually I didn't do that with because when I took her out of the pot, most of her roots were down in the pot. So I don't think that she's gonna have a problem with it drying off. I am watching them like a hawk. I just did this yesterday afternoon. Um, and again, it's gonna be really hot in here today because it's going to go up into the 90s and this room always gets a little warm uh, but I decided uh, to keep them in here I, I've been having my humidifier going pretty much all day which keeps the humidity usually in the high 60s uh, so I think that that you know is helpful to them and then I moved this fan that's typically down by my dendrobiums because this window gets really hot during the day um I took that fan and I put it here and I'm just providing air circulation to try to keep their foliage um, from getting too hot. Next week, the temperatures are gonna be a little more reasonable, somewhere in the 70s, the high 70s, but I mean, it's been consistently in the 80s every day and now you know, it's going up into the 90s today. So um, I just wanted to provide a little bit of cool air movement for these um, orchids so that they wouldn't suffer because Again, it's my understanding that they don't enjoy really hot temperatures. Ideally, I want to put my zygopetalum where my Miltoniopsis orchids are, but I wanna get acquainted with it first before I put it with my Miltoniopsis. My Miltoniopsis grow on the window in my master bed, uh, bathroom and they love it. They're doing really, really good. The roots are growing. I have two spikes, um, so yeah, uh, that, that's eventually where I want this orchid to go because I feel like it would enjoy similar conditions. But again, I'm not acquainted with this plant yet. I don't know its quirks, so I want to keep it under my eye. I'm in here in my grow room <laughs> constantly, all day long. Whenever I can be in here, I'm in here. So um, she'll get a lot more attention if I just keep her in here for now. So that's the fan. Um, so that's pretty much... Uh, what I wanted to show you, I am going to keep my eye, make sure that the roots are staying humid. Uh, when these microcloths start to dry out, I will, you know, dampen them again. Um, and it may turn out that in the long run, they don't need these, but I'd rather err on the side of caution because I know that their roots are very sensitive um, to drying out. This one has new roots forming. Um, I believe it's on this side. And so that's the reason why I put this cloth as close as I could get it without touching because <clears throat> the new roots, again, I understand if they come out and it's not humid enough, they'll abort. And I don't want that to happen. I mean, she does have a really good root system. All of these um, plants did when I unpotted them. They had really good root systems, at least as far as I could tell. They were firm and a, and a good amount of them, um, but I don't want to lose them. So, um, and as you can see, these roots, I mean, I just gave her a tiny bit of water yesterday and it was very hot in here and you see all the humidity in the glass, in the uh, cup, and the roots still look, you know, damp. So I think this setup might possibly work, but I am going to watch it very closely because if these start to dry out, um, I could lose them. So anyways, I just wanted to bring you along on that journey with me. <laughs> I'm gonna post another video where I'm gonna add some plants to my transferring orchids to water culture series. In talking to a few of you, um, the, the orchids that you're transferring to water culture are orchids that aren't doing well, they're rescue orchids. And um, so, you know, I'm giving you plants that I just got, 
but also too, I think it might be beneficial if I take a few of my orchids that are struggling or aren't doing well. Um, like for instance, this fowl right here. Um, she's she's just she's a little bit of a blockhead. She does <laughs> she she does very weird things. I'll I'll share that with you. But I think maybe I'll put her um, in the series. I'm gonna look around at my collection and see. Um, maybe I have a few orchids that aren't doing well or I got that have very poor root systems that I can kind of add to the series uh, so that you can see um, along with taking a new orchid and putting it in water culture how you can um, rescue uh, orchids with water culture. I feel like water culture is a really strong, a lot of backlighting, sorry, a uh, really strong um, tool to have in your arsenal to save an orchid actually. Even if it's not your preferred method of growing, uh, you can use water culture to save an orchid and then put it back into your method, your preferred method of growing. So I think it might be beneficial to just kind of share that with you. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys are, you know, gonna have a great week and um, you know, that you've been enjoying the series so far. And we'll take a look in a couple of days how these orchids are doing. And I will talk to you all next time.